world. A perfect example is chicha. Chicha is the national beverage of Peru, so it's a corn-based beer. To get the conversion of starch to sugars in the corn, we use the traditional method of actually chewing on the corn. Human saliva has the enzyme that helps with that conversion. In the early stages of brewing, grain is mixed with hot water so complex starches can be broken down into simple sugars. These can then convert the sugar into alcohol. Today, modern brewers use malted barley, which already contains the enzyme needed for this conversion. But ancient civilizations like the Incas learned to chew grain like corn since saliva naturally contains the enzyme that breaks down starches. Two years ago, we brewed chicha as part of our ancient ales program. You might say we bit off a little more than we could chew. We weren't ready for just how physically grueling making this beer was. This corn is really, really dry and powdery, and it literally sucks all the saliva out of your mouth, so it kind of hurts. It took way longer than we thought it would uh, to chew the amount of corn that we needed to chew. I definitely want to brew chicha again, but I'm going to have a hard time convincing my team to chew all that corn again. So I'm trying to figure out why I'm in this cornfield. I want to put you in a, in a frame of mind to hear this news. So, so, why don't we go out and uh, pick some local corn? Are we having a barbecue or something? You'll see. Remember the last time we brewed at the pub with a bunch of different corn? Do you remember how horrific chewing all that blue corn was? Do you remember the part where we made the beer incorporating human saliva? I'm kind of yeah, a masochist. So I want to do that again. Oh, so I didn't want you to run away scared when it's right. you cheat you again. I'm, I'll fully embrace the project again. I mean, I'm going to high five on that. All kidding aside, it's a major relief to hear that head brewer Brian Selders is on board because this project is going to require a lot of his help. The spirit of improving on what we did before, I'm excited. In fact, I'm going to need my whole team's help on this one. So, uh, Connie, you know we're doing our chicha brew coming up at the pub soon, right? I'm planning on asking a bunch of you guys to help us <sighs> chewing, but I think we're going to try and get through like 40 or 50 pounds. All right, there's Jeff. And you got caught you before you could cut it. Nick, need you too. Uh, I know you're gonna hear me. We need help chewing. Hi, Lord. You're gonna love this. It's gonna turn your tongue purple, your teeth a little purple, look great with your pretty eyes. This is next week? Yeah. I'm actually on vacation next this week. No excuse. It's last year we had a rather pathetic show. Like very, very ambitious goals were not met on poundage of purple Peruvian corn. This time, I've decided to up the ante. We're going to unveil this chicha brew at our pub in Rehoboth in just three weeks. Our Rehoboth brew pub is the soul of dog fishing. We have a five-barrel brewery, which is equivalent of 10 kegs of beer, to explore anything we want to brew. And it's really neat because it's meant that the people that make that pilgrimage to our pub are really part of our R&D process. They have a, a say, they have a voice in what they like, making it out into a wider distribution. What's up, guys? Yeah. Last time we tried making chicha, we had some detractors who said we didn't really make it the authentic style. I decided to take that to heart and travel to Peru in search of authentic techniques and ingredients to make this age-old beer come alive. <laughs> was once home to the Inca Empire, a pretty advanced civilization. They built Machu Picchu and created an extensive road system over some of the most rugged mountains in the world. Most of the culture was wiped out by evading Spaniards, but one of the few customs that still remains is the brewing and drinking of chicha. For me, this makes chicha even more valuable. 
I've come here to seek out some old school brewmasters who can show me the proper way to chew the corn and the proper ingredients to use in the brewing process. This is my uh, first time ever, not only to Peru, but to South America. Stoked to be researching the Chicha tradition, but I'm going to probably be doing it in these same clothes for many days, unless they find my uh, luggage. Hopefully my bag will show up eventually. Uh, I'm going to start to smell pretty right pretty soon. <laughs> A beautiful morning here in Cusco, Peru. I'm not waiting on a lady, just waiting on an archaeologist. Specifically, my friend, Dr. Alexi Branich, an archaeologist from UCLA. I like your ride, Alexi. Come on up, bro. The area surrounding Cusco is known as the Sacred Valley of the Incas and is littered with sites of archaeological importance. We're on our way to a dig site managed by Alexi. What's up with the uh, sudden change in oh, infrastructure? So uh, we're done with the roads and we're done with normal security officers. They're now four-legged security yeah. officers. Uh, how's your backside doing, Sam? It's kind of a personal question. Yeah, yeah it's uh, not so good. <laughs> not to mention, it's extremely hard to get used to breathing in this high altitude. That's an interesting commute. Come on down. With a lack of oxygen, it's almost like I got a buzz on. And we haven't even had a beer yet. Did I mention I'm afraid of heights? Right in the middle? That big rock right there is the focus. You can see all my students, they're excavating their trenches around there. The Inca Empire hit its peak about 500 years ago. Alexi has brought me to this site because he says it's where the Incas used to hold ceremonial feasts. And their drink of choice, you guessed it, chicha. We're excavating on a sacred Inca site. In Inca religion, this is where all the waters of Cusco first originated from. Drunk in large quantities and poured over a sacred rock as an offering, Chicha was the root of all Incan civilization. They paid people with beer, and then they would build things like Sacsayhuaman and Machu Picchu. But to build more of this, they had to go out and conquer more territories, create more agricultural terraces, grow more corn to make beer to pay people. And it just became a cyclical process. The Inca were essentially an empire of beer. What's this whole area called? Well, catch what's called Chacan. Other people call it the Devil's Balcony. A room with a view. Devil's Balcony. Here, take a seat down here. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I have a wicked thing with uh, uh, heights. Heights, I'm not good. Uh, so, uh, oh, jeez. Spanish thought the, the Inca uh, were worshipping the devil. In the Andean religion, this is a good place where you could come here, take your offerings of chicha, and you dump it over into the Rio Sapi, which is the sacred river that flows directly into Cusco. So, a river of beer literally ran into the city. In later centuries, that same city was overflown with chicherias, bar after bar selling as many versions of the homebrew as there were people making it. Today, that's all but lost. See, Sam, um, this is a great conversation and all, but eventually you gotta drink beer. Tough job, someone's gotta do it. in Travel and Living Channel. Beach Wine and Food Festival in Miami. 
Son cuatro días llenos de clases de cocina, catas, degustaciones y presentaciones especiales. Pero el atractivo que realmente hace de este festival una experiencia única son los chefs famosos, a quienes nunca antes habrás visto tan accesibles. Clearly getting food personalities and great chefs to come to South Florida in the dead of winter, most places in the world, is not a hard ask. I mean, it's all about, in my opinion, you know, location, location, location. Everything is contained to eight, nine, ten, twelve hotels and the beach. Attendees can sort of get a feel for what's going on. It's a great festival. Y por si esto fuera poco, otras celebridades terminan aprovechando este evento como plataforma para lanzar sus productos. Es la primera vez que asisto a un festival de este tipo. Everybody loves to eat and drink. I think when you put eating and drinking on one of the most beautiful beaches on the planet, you have the success of the South Beach one. Mm. Todos los viernes, Team y Team son dos viajeros en busca de experiencias únicas. Y desde México hasta Japón, puedes estar seguro que las encontrarán. Porque no es el destino lo que cuenta, es el recorrido. Todos los viernes en Travel and Living Channel. Oh, es just the cameraman. Day two of my quest in the ancient city of Cusco, Peru, where I hope to unearth the secrets of a very ancient brew invented by the Incas, chicha. It may be timeless, but the clock is ticking on Dogfish's plans to release our own limited batch of chicha at the brew pub in just three weeks. We don't yet have a recipe, a brew strategy, or even any idea how to properly chew corn when following the traditional method. So today, I'm investigating an old-school chicharia with my buddy, archaeologist Alexei Franich. Cool, so where's our first hunt? Where are we going? This place is called El Descanso, the resting place. And if you talk to the old-timers, they say, yeah, if you want chicha, you got to talk to her. And she will not budge from the methods that her mom, from her grandma, probably a great-grandma, taught them. Senora Mercedes Picard has been making chicha for over 30 years using a recipe that may be 300 years old. She uses only wood fire, traditional clay pot, and authentic natural ingredients in making her corn brew. So when she says she's open for business, the customers come from far and wide. This is the flag, chicha. Yeah, this indicates that chicha is on right now. Hello. Señores, buenos días. Chicha is traditionally regarded as something much more than a tasty brew. To the Incas, the starchy drink was both nourishment and currency in a glass. Before any first sip, that heritage is still recognized by performing a ritual of thanks and respect. Pachamama. Santa Tierra. Kankastiki. Tepe. Soma. Ajaikita. We drink now. So tonight we are. Uh, Salud. Mm -hmm. You know the sports. Yes, yes, I know right. this part. Here you go. Let's Start try this hatch. one. Cheers. She's going to drink with us. It's nice. That's a brewer after my own heart. Okay. <laughs> Very citrusy, lime, grassy, tart. This is very rich with active yeast. The foam on top is actually the beer fermenting while we're drinking it. Yeah. How many days old is this? Three days. Three days. Does she know a percentage of alcohol? Bueno, ahorita. You know, one to two percent alcohol. If it keeps going, maybe up to three percent. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll wait around. I got time. I got time for that. <laughs> Contrary to what I've heard is tradition, Sonora Picard doesn't chew corn in making her chicha. She says her ancestors handed down the more modern practice of germinating corn. By allowing the corn to sprout, the enzyme needed to convert the starch is produced in process, eliminating the need for human saliva. They bring it out and they put it for two days in the sun. Yep, yeah, dries it out and then they can start doing that process with it. The dried, germinated corn is put in a pot with hot water, the Stone Age equivalent of the modern mash tun. 
After a little time, the starches are broken down and that liquid becomes what we modern brewers call the wort. In the final step, she filters it through a basket of hay into clay pots and lets them ferment naturally for two days. She's absolutely you know, adamant about it. She says, the best chicha has to be strained this way. Mm -hmm. You can do it the other way, right. but she's making you know, off-center chicha for her off-center Peruvian. Peruvian. So that's what she's doing. <sighs> With a huge amount of corn we have to chew for dogfish's chicha, while still maintaining our usual production levels, we can't wink it like we did last time. I put in a call to Team Chicha, Katrinka, our lab expert, Carl, our lab technician, and our brewmaster, Flores, to come up with a game plan. Hey! Hey! Where have you been? This only shows my torso, I think, but underneath... All I've done is alpaca boxer brief. <laughs> So I've been doing a bunch of recon stuff out here. I'm definitely getting a, a feeling that this is a woman's world. It was always the women that made the chicha. They're brewing their chicha like 7, 10, 12, 15 gallons at a time. We're going to be doing a lot more. The first time we made chicha, it took us like five hours to do like seven pounds. I think our goal is somewhere around 40 pounds. What well, would be cool if we could figure out if there are really people that are much better uh, um, than others. Who within dogfish can can be spitmaster? What's your guys' time frame? We're planning on brewing this next week, right at the brewery. Yep, uh, on Tuesday. All right, see you guys. Have a great day. Um, the forty pounds—it's a number I had not heard before. That's a lot of corn. Forty pounds is a lot of corn. So how can we optimize that? And are there people that are much better um, than others, and why? Team Chicha is going to do some recon to see who at Dogfish can be our super chewers. By the time I get back from my mission in Peru, we will have just a few days to chew 40 pounds of corn and brew this beer for its unveiling at our pub. Alexi and me 
is actually moving in reverse. This is like a, a pub crawl through time. A pub crawl through time. Huh? We've got one more Chicharia to investigate, and he says this one is more old school than the last. We're actually going to give a look at the masticating method. Ah, salivation will be our salvation. <laughs> this, this is the actual place right here. Come on in. So is that like the equivalent of the big old bag? But this is the way it used to be. They used to put flowers up. Because the flowers, after a few days, start to wilt. That's so how you know when it's fresh? After a few days, you're walking by like, I think the cheech is like two, three days old. So you can tell by the flowers. But it's been replaced in most parts by the plastic bag. Watch your head. Yeah. We're actually sitting inside what appears to be an intact Inca building. Yeah, it's just something like the cobwebs and stuff. Yeah. You can see a lot of stuff. This place has been used for a long time. Talk about House Tawar. Man, if this was in Los Angeles, I'd say they overdid it. <laughs> With the theme, R. Uh, like, this could possibly happen in nature. It's brew day here at Senora Lourdes Flores' place, a neighborhood chicha establishment with no charter of incorporation or traditional storefront. Just centuries of know-how. All right, so that's that, that's that germinated corn we saw before. Yeah. It turns out Sonora Flores also uses partially germinated corn, but she still believes in combining it with the chewing method. She has to keep production moving for her local regulars, so she lets us take a shot at helping her out. But they don't ah, see, and that's too much. Yeah, look, look how that some of that was pretty dry. That was rookie, rookie that, mistake. That looks like something you dropped off in the boardwalk. So this is kind of, they don't chew it to the point where it's a paste. Right. They're not open it all up. A little bit of saliva in there, the looks of it. Yours is a big goober right there. Right. Yeah. Uh, these spit directly. I don't think so, man. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You're supposed to use your hand. I think <laughs> I think you're supposed to take it out like this and okay. drop it in there. Okay. Just is getting ready, and that's gonna be that's a filter. Yeah. Smells so good. Smells like corn and hay and milk. It smells like Amish country. Yeah. Another chicha maker using a basket of hay for filtration. I have a hunch this is a key find in terms of authenticity. Whether or not it's the best filtration method, the fresh hay is surely adding flavor notes to the brew. In the wine world, tawar is like the dirt that the grapes grow. And in the beer world, the tawar is all the unique processes that you use. Her tawar couldn't be more, you know, authentic. After the customary offering, we pop the top on a two-day-old brew in its prime. Whoa. She rocked hers in one sip. I got served. You got served. How long you've had that brewery? Are you ready? Are you ready? Me? Me? Ready? That's really good. The consistency's a little chalky. Thicker, but still lemony, it's milky. Damn, I have no idea how you're gonna replicate all these nuances. No kidding. Sonora Flores has an extensive list of spices used to flavor her chicha. And trying to convert them into a shopping list through a translator ends up being a bit of a challenge. She just rattled off their seven different ingredients, and each one has to go in just right. But the good news is we got five days to get it all together from, you know, one, one continent to the next, so we're fine. Is it me or did she just pour herself another giant glass of cheetah? She would you <laughs> Back at Milton, Katrinka and Carl are on the prowl to collect saliva from all our co-workers. You can run, but you can't hide. They'll bring it back to the lab, test it, and determine whose saliva passes the amylase test. Hey, oh, Tracy, I need your saliva. <laughs> you can tell me why you're not getting it. <laughs> We're going to test your amylase level. Did you get it? I don't. You can't spit on man. That's weird. Would it help if Carl took his shirt off? <laughs> this is spit. You're really just spit. Break it to rule or? Are you kidding? Nope. Fortunately, I'm dead serious. Go dogfish tea. What do you need? Spit. For what? For a drug test. We're testing for opiates. Oh, come on. Seriously. <laughs> Don't make me have to take it. So, all right, listen. 
Yeah. I've done some pretty disgusting but... I want to clone you. I knew you guys were doing some freak as well. God. It's better than you are in the Now it's all over my face. This is atrocious. This is probably the least proud of myself that I've ever been. Well, not on the clock. I'm about to puke. Go ahead. I'm going to lose it. Ale was brewed for centuries without hops. Before the 1300s, ale was flavored with herbs and spices like rosemary and thyme. Yet the antiseptic quality of hops helps to preserve ale from spoiling and later became a vital part of the recipe. I'm just so mad at myself. Too many boys, too many of my own told me something. Blood, sweat, and tears, Katrinka and Carl from Dogfish's Quality Control Department have gathered saliva samples from nearly all the staff. In just a few days, we're going to try our hand at brewing chicha, an ancient Peruvian beer made from corn chewed by people. Carl and Katrinka are going to test the samples to find out who at Dogfish has enough animals, the enzyme and spit that will make them successful chewers. All right, dose half a mil, starch to each. Shake them up and then let them sit. Starch is a complex chain of individual simple sugars, like a string of pearls. Amylase, a digestive enzyme, can break the sugars apart. The more amylase in the saliva, the faster the process takes place. So now we set the timer to 10 minutes, and then at the end we put iodine in to uh, see what our color is. When iodine is added to the solution, if the conversion has taken place, the solution turns brown, meaning the saliva has passed. If not enough amylase is present, the starches will still be in long chains. The iodine bonds with the starch, turning the solution blue. This means the saliva has failed. Brown is good, blue is bad. Tracy, S, Audrey, Katrinka, Nora, and Heather all pass. If this were competition, I would put my money on the women folk. Oh, those are all passes. Oh. The package failed. Well, not that it's a competition, but am I a better spitter than Flores? Yeah, Flores was the only man that failed. Yes. Oh, Flores. <laughs> not that it's a competition. Not Flores, that it's a competition. I have to talk to you about your but... spin levels. I'm very disappointed in you. Your volume was fantastic, but your potency was quite pathetic. You're right. That's, <laughs> that's the story of my life. <laughs> that's the proof that the test is not good. That's a false, that's a false positive. I'm just good. kidding. You passed. You passed. Yeah. Are we failing? Oh, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you I was just calling your leg. You passed. Oh, come on. You're too easy. Other men at Dogfish, though, didn't test so well. 37% of test takers failed, and they were all men. The women at Dogfish have won the War of Saliva. So we have a possibility to have 30 people who can chew. What I'm just a little bit worried about is that we don't have enough people to get to the volume of corn that we need to get to. So we're here another beautiful day in downtown Cusco. At this point, I've got a uh, belly full of chicha. I got a mind full of chicha. That last chicha that I had is the one that I really fell in love with. She used a lot of really interesting spices that I'm hoping to find here at the big central market. If you consider yourself an extreme shopper and you've never been to Cusco, drop what you're doing and book a flight. This market will make your head explode. These people were selling like ox vertebrae and bull frogs. I was ready to come up to the Eye of Newt stand or the takeout window where you get dragon nipple chips. They had absolutely everything you could imagine. But I've got a specific shopping list, so we head straight for the spices. Okay, this looks like we've come to the right place. That's close. That's on our list. Is that like natural cinnamon stick? That is like the biggest cinnamon stick. Beautiful. Does that smell awesome? Oh yeah, that's very subtle. I don't think people will believe me when I get back. When you come back with a giant it's cinnamon it's stick. What else do we have on our list? I gotta get fennel. There's this local spearmint that they use. That one I cannot pronounce for the life of me. We'll make international signs for spearmint. Which is this? What's that? This is a toronghi. This is a toronghi. It's the local spearmint I was looking for. Ooh, that's really good. That's She's beautiful. gonna tell you the price, and you're gonna go, what? 
That's too much. Yeah, we're gonna try to haggle this one. Esto cuánto está? What? Cinco. He says five solas. Five solas. That's crazy yeah. talk. Okay, Kate. She says four. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we negotiate. <laughs> ah. All right. I think we're good. Muchas gracias. On the way out, we find a shop selling chicha glasses. Come on here. You think this is the kind of place that would have them? They got enough glasses in here. Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, he says only one model. One size fits all. Those are hard. The day that our teach is finally available, a bunch of the people that made it with us and chewed the corn with us. Right. I'm going to invite to do the ritual cheers. All right. Using the ritual real old school glass. All right. I'll even blow towards you. I'll blow towards you. And uh, you'll get a little bit of Peruvian news, too, when you open it up. If I could get these back in one piece, they'll be perfect for our chicha tapping ceremony. Muchas gracias. Now, I've got one last shopping stop. I'm convinced that in order to make our dogfish chicha even more authentic than the last time, I'm gonna need a chicha basket so we can filter our brew through hay, just like the locals. I'm guessing this is it. Red baskets and beyond. <laughs> this family is recognized locally as the source of master crafted chicha baskets, hands down. Yes, yes. Oh, wow, this is cool. That's actually about the size. Look at that. That's a good size. Oh, that's beautiful. You want your credit card? Yeah, they do take credit cards here, right? I think we can get gift wrapped. Uh, Oh, no, I don't think so. Probably not. Probably not. All right, Muchas gracias. gracias. Thank Muchas gracias. you very much. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful work. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got the basket. You keep the chicken. Is it like if you buy a basket, you get a chicken? Yeah, pretty much. So this is kind of bittersweet. This is my last day in Peru. I wasn't expecting to love this place as much as I did. And I know we got a lot done here, but I'm a little anxious to get home. And the big question is, we ask all of our co-workers to join us in chewing this much corn. Will they say, yeah, we want to do this? I'm hopeful they will. Five and a half thousand children applied for the place that you're standing in now. It's good to be back here in Delaware. After my liquid expedition to uncover the secrets of chicha brewing in Peru, me and all my chicha ingredients are back in the U.S. of A. Brew tomorrow. Today is Chua Palooza. We got a lot going on, so I gotta check in with the crew and make sure we're ready to do this. We've got a mountain of corn to chew by the end of today, so that saliva can work its magic overnight. No chewed corn today. No chicha tomorrow. Oh, when do we stop salivating, Connie? This is like Pavlovian central here, just Wait. constant. This is everything that we brought back from Peru. Fuck, 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 fuck. Pack that. This is Larry, the lucky llama. <laughs> His goal was really to just karmically be in this basket to shepherd it across the sea. So. The glasses, all of it, or just some just, of it? Just stuff on top. Oh, bummer. Wait, just let me see what I got. Watch your fingers. Okay, one made. Here, this is a good one. Nice. Ta-da! Another one. We got three. Hey, look at all these we got. Summer glasses. Summer here. Summer. Summer, summer pros. I'm hooking up with head brewer Brian Selvers so we can try a dry run on the corn before we distribute it to all the super chewers. Hey, you're right. Yeah. Like non flashback of corn chewing right now. First, we try chewing the dried corn whole, but quickly realize it's too hard on the mouth. That was a mistake. What? I could have really hurt my teeth just now. My dad's a, a tooth doctor, and he might have been good to have on standby for this situation. Then we try grinding the corn up before we chew. I don't see us ever <coughs> doing this in a large batch. Dogfish is still a functioning brewery with a production schedule. 
The idea was that our staff would be multitasking, chewing their allotments of corn while still performing their normal duties. Unless we come up with something to make this easier, productivity is going to grind to a halt. Not to mention making it through all the corn. It took us, I don't know how many hours last year to chew seven pounds of corn. This year we're going to try and chew 40. In the last half hour, I'd say we've gotten through about an ounce. I'm no math I'm a scientist, but I think we're in trouble here if we don't come up with something. Brian then comes up with the idea of hydrating the corn in hot water to make it softer, and it works. So, after a brief interlude, the corn is ready, just in time for the start of the dogfish work day. Uh, we're very dry. I'll work at it. It's going to be a lot of chewing. What's it taste like? The erasers when you were a kid in grade school. Yeah. Have you chugged? Now, what if we don't finish what we what we scheduled to finish in poundage tonight? Okay, thanks for your help. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good whole year to plan. We researched it. We had a good game plan, and it still kicked our butts. This volume of corn. So I'm gonna keep working on this one. Beautiful night, a fresco, a little chewing under the sun. Acting as a DJ 
instead of two turntables and a microphone, he has two valves, and by cutting and scratching with those valves, he's getting the exact right temperature mix of cold and hot water to mash in the barley. In the case of our chewed corn, that process has already begun. But, unfortunately, chewed corn is not our only grain, so we still have to mash. Because we are a brewery and our federal license mandates we have to use barley, Yeah, we have a little bit of barley going in with this batch. And now, the chewed corn. Purple. Don't let that splash up, please. Okay. okay. Mix that up, please. While the mixture steeps, we get our secret chicha technology ready. Put the f lotion in the basket! Put the lotion on your skin! Right? Smells good, doesn't it? it? Does smell nice. So the hay itself will also add some grassy notes to the beer. Oh yeah. Perfect. Good job. Exactly what we were looking for. Well done, people. After mashing in, we transfer the liquid from the mash tun to the boil kettle. We separate the liquids from the solids and are left with wort, or young beer. In this case, we filter the wort through our Peruvian filter basket, which catches the chunks and I suspect adds authentic flavor notes. The wort is then boiled, neutralizing any um, germs or cooties from the chewed corn, so they're long gone. Then, the spices are added for additional flavor. The majority of our spicing is going to come from the ingredients I brought back from Peru. And we want these kind of suspended in the wort like giant tea bags. All right, here it goes. Bye. After the boil, the young beer is set to the fermenter. We'll add oxygen and yeast and let it ferment for about 10 days until it reaches our target alcohol of 4.5%. Always fun brewing with you, brother. Likewise. It's almost time of the day where I can come right back down this road and there's going to be a big old stick hanging off the front of this building with this beautiful bouquet of red flowers saying, Cheech is on tap. Come here and have one. So it's nice to see the Cheech flag just up there letting people know that we're serving it finally. That's it. Game on. Cheech is on. finished without a hitch and we met our deadline all right we're tapping i really look forward to days like this when we're at the pub tapping a new beer but today i'm a little anxious because the last time around we didn't have great luck with chicha i'm psyched to see if our customers are going to dig this new more authentic batch of chicha but in order to appease the brewing gods and give us some good luck i have one last thing to do before we serve They have a great tradition that I learned down there in Peru, which is like a prayer slash cheers. Let's blow towards the beach in Rehoboth. Blow towards our boil kettle. And let's blow towards the, the brewery in Milton for our peeps over there. So that's towards our ancestors and our lost loved ones. And that's it. And then we look each other in the eyes and say, cheers. Let's give this a whirl. Oh, that's good, Chicha. I enjoy it. Spicy up front. Uh, very dry and front. clean. I taste a little Angela, a little Katrinka. Yeah. Like a lot of Brian. <laughs> I got a lot of Brian in this beer. <laughs> yeah. Three pounds of Brian in this beer. I'm psyched with the way this turned out. It tastes really good. Me too. This was round two of Chicha brewed in Rehoboth, but this one had a lot more recon from real brewery and Chicha, and you can taste it. Let's hope our customers can get by our methods and appreciate the love that went into it. Did you guys try the Chicha? Uh, so somebody salivated into this? <laughs> That's a good nose. Sounds great. I really want to try one. Very light, but it's got a lot of flavor to it. Which means you can drink a lot of it. First thing I smell when I looked at it was cinnamon. And it was cool, refreshing. I know, it's important. I love it. Beauty's in the eye of the beer holder, right? I was unsure whether it really could be done, but I actually Sam did it. It never fails to surprise me just how off-centered most of our customers are willing to be for the sake of trying something new. The reception to Chicha has been great. Not everyone can get over the mental hurdle of knowing how it's made, but once they try it, I think they really dig it. Now I just have to convince my staff of my plan for next year. So look, we did the math. And if we wanted to brew this in Milton next year, we would need 150 people. And then we do 100 barrels bottled, 
of Chicha. I can feel the enthusiasm. I can just sense the enthusiasm. We'll see if it happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This beer was a great success. I mean, we brought back an authentic recipe from the masters of Peru, and we were able to recreate it thanks to my awesome dogfish team. And we hit our deadline, so we were able to release the beer at our pub and share it with all our devoted customers. If we can turn a bunch of people in coastal Delaware onto a recipe that's been going on for hundreds of years, and hopefully it keeps Chicha alive and remind people there are millions of different beers out there, and they should search them out and try them all. Very clear, almost like a American type pilsner. I almost get like a bubblegum type flavor to it. I smell licorice. Smooth. It's very smooth. Maybe citrusy? Pear. I smell pear. Olives? <laughs> Tastes like popcorn. <laughs> a little bit of fennel in there, a little bit of grassiness. You have to go with some really good packaging on this. It's a girl beer. Girls are gonna like this because it's smooth. I don't think you should tell too many people about drinking slime based beer. But I have no problem drinking it. Hoy es el día de San Valentín. Esperen y verán qué voy a preparar para mi amor. Estoy preparando.